So I'm going to go ahead and go through all the stuff that I'm going to record it that way. So, um, and we've talked about this a lot in the group and everything. And, um, you know, you guys kind of know what we talk about using our sense of vision, our sense of hearing, our sense of feeling or doing stuff, kinetic. Um, and then we've talked a lot about the fact that we can, hi Stacy, um, use the, there's the emotional component too. And, um, you know, the more research I'm doing and the more things I read about, the emotional piece of it is just as huge as any other piece of it. And so what I wanted to do and the new piece of vision boarding um, is the fact that if we can use the emotional piece of it as much as of the other pieces. So, um, and I think that the important piece to, once you figure out how, what, how you learn best, because we all kind of know how we learn best. Um, and I think you guys have all kind of posted about that, but I think we need to realize and understand that once there has been an injury or concussion or anything like that, that our mode of learning changes. And um, so for example, um, I was pretty sure in high school I was a visual learner. Um, don't give me anything auditory. Um, I was a terrible student in the fact that I argued with my teachers all the time. I hated school because the teachers were always wrong and probably not that they were only wrong, but I would just do it this way and they would just me to do it the other way. Um, but if you give me the book and I would just read it and learn it, right? Um, but don't try to tell me what to do. But then since my concussion, or multiple concussions, um, what has worked most for me is I have to feel it or I have to do it. Um, you know, why did I get on my horse tonight in the dark? Because I need to feel what it like, is like to ride her, right? That memory is so important to keep as sharp as actually doing it. No, we weren't roping. And yes, it was dark. I couldn't see where we were going, but it was the fact that we were moving through space. And um, so I think that something that we have to key in on. And as I go, if they have questions, please, please stop me because I'm going to probably just talk. Um, I think we have to key on the effect of the systemic, the proprioception, which is the feeling and then the vestibular, which is the movement. And if we use those two pieces, especially for our kiddos or people that we're working with, or as we ourselves are working on things, those are so, so important to learn new things or to remember new things. Um, and then there's the emotional piece of it too, right? Because every time you form a new piece of memory, into you know take it from our short-term memory to our long-term memory so form a motor pattern which roping is a motor pattern a riding a horse you know why is it so hard to change from horse to horse right because we put those things into our brain in certain ways and if we don't practice it it just goes away and then there's, um, every time our brain does that we record emotion in emotion or a memory um, a feeling with that right and I think that that's our people that get so, so, that's how you can help the people that get so, so nervous when they compete, right? Because they have that piece instilled in their brain and you can change that, right? Everything is, everything can be changed. Um, and you use those other pieces to do that. So first you have to know what kind of then you had. And then I wanted to show about vision, board, vision boarding. And, um, you know, I have always done it. And ha have you guys done it? Do you guys, have you done it in pictures? Like, mag like magazine, like actual pictures or writing it down? Or have you done it? I assume everybody's done pieces of it. I've always personally always written goals out or I've done a list of bucket list things but I've never done it with pictures, so. Mm. Nothing, okay. Um, no, I've never done it. I don't even know what a vision board is. Okay. <laughs> I've, I've read a lot about them, I've thought a lot about them, but yeah, writing it down or putting it somewhere where you can see it, 
doesn't always happen. Mm -hmm. So always think that I've got all these things in line, but then we all know that it doesn't ever happen. <laughs> Stacy, I've written it down. I've never used pictures, but I've written it down. Mm -hmm. And I put it places where I write it down in multiple places and I actually put things in places that I will see every every day, whether it be in my car, my pickup, on the refrigerator, you know, wherever you frequent. And I actually have had them in the barn, in the tack room, where you, you know, you go to grab your bridle or your saddle. Right. So I, go ahead. So I love that idea and I think it's awesome. My question to those that do it do you ever does it ever just become a part of like a fixture you know does it ever just become just another thing on the wall and then you know you don't notice it anymore do you have to change it up in order for it to maintain its oomph or you know because to me it's like once you put it on the wall you see it there for a few days and then it just becomes a part of the norm and i feel like i would just gloss right over it so I thought that too. So, um, so going back to what a vision board is, right? It's just a, an expression of our goals, right? So our goals we set, but a vision board is more like, I, um, you know, I am statements in that respect. Uh -huh. Right. Um, so yes. So then the person I'm working with, you know, she challenged me yesterday when I was talking about this thing and, um, that I wanted to do this Zoom call. And she's like, and I said, you know, I've only ever written it down. I haven't ever done pictures. And she's challenged me to go back and um, reread, you know, re-look re at them. And the reason, um, you know, it always keeps sticking in my mind, the fact that when Carmen Pazabon wrote that thing about writing, writing her own barrel horse in the NFR, you know, put it in, in the box, right? Like mm -hmm. ever since I knew that, that's just always stuck in my brain, right? Um, so I went back and I looked, okay, and I had erased one off my phone, but I had a list on my phone. And I think maybe this, I got mad and I erased it this summer sometime, but, and I have one on my mirror, right? And the one on my mirror says, I don't even know what it says, but it's the fact that, oh, I looked, I was listening to something earlier today and I wrote it down and this is the concept. This is the fancy word for the concept, just put it that way. Quantum model of reality, quantum model of reality. So if we put it out there into reality, and there's the guy I was listening to, and I can share it too, and I don't even know his name. And um, the fact is you put it out into reality, even if it's there, it's gonna come true, right? Um, and to that being said, I'm gonna go back to my story of mine like on my phone i have my two screensavers right now do i put i've, I've tried putting them on my phone because i know like dusty does that and stuff but that doesn't work for me what i have to have on my phone screensavers or you know screens are things that i need to do every day and not even things i need to do how i need to act not act present myself in the world right so that is constant reminders that way um what I wrote on my list was, um, and I probably wrote them probably 10 years ago, this list was that I'm going to run down the alley in the NFR, right? And then, and I, and I wrote it there, and I always needed to not write alley, I wanted to write tunnel, but that, you know, that never felt right, but I'm like, well, there's never going to be a tunnel, there's never going to be breakaway roping, I only wrote alleyway, right? Because at the time, I thought I'd be a bow racer. I just, that's not <laughs> Anyway, um, so when we went down to the arena floor a couple years ago, and so in my mind, there's always been this thing since I've been 10 years old, right? 10 years old, went to Vanifar, sat there in those seats, and I was just so excited to get to go to the road. I was so excited to miss school, honestly. Gonna miss a month of school. Hated school. <laughs> Fifth grade. Hated school, right? And um, that was all I really cared about. <laughs> you know obviously and we got to travel and i love to drive and you know, all that stuff but we got there and i'm like oh this is awesome right i'm gonna rope here someday that thought was in my head right but 
I had no idea, right? Like that thought was in my head. And then I got, as I got older, you know, and I remember being like 18 and going, cause you know, went every year and um, thinking, just kind of being so mad at the world, right? Because there's no breakaway roping, right? Like how am I gonna rope there, right? So that's when I thought I should be a team roper. I thought I should be a barrel racer, right? So when I went down to write this stuff, I wrote, you know, alleyway, but it just never felt right. But I had this gray thing in my head, right? You know, it's like this feeling. And so I kept writing it down. And then um, when we went there, we walked around on the, um, you know, when we went down behind where the barrel horses come in and, you know, we are just doing all that stuff. I'm like, oh, you know, da, 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 da. And then we walked around to the back, walked through the backside there and into the actual tunnel. It like, and it took a couple later, I'm like, oh, I have to change. You know what I mean? It, it, like, then you just, it's this envision, it's this feeling, right? And I think you have to put the feeling to the picture. And I think that's where the power of pictures come from. Um, so that, it's that feeling and picture, so you, you have to feel it first to create the reality, whatever that is. So that's where I don't, that's, that's how they go from becoming something you just write down to becoming something that you create. I don't know, that's a lot. That makes sense at all. So, so you're saying, oh, is it, can you yeah, hear me? You're, yeah, okay. So we need to take those pictures that we took and just, you know, crop our horses into those pictures. Right. And then so it'll here. be a reality shortly. Here, let me show you. So I'm going to share my screen and I don't have that picture. That's a good idea. So, okay, here's my Facebook page. So the reason this whole thing, okay, so I'm making this, so I use this program, Canva. I shared the link, canva.com, right? It doesn't uh -huh. matter what this is. I was making home. Um, so, like, look, everybody see everybody see Reno. This is where I share this. So I made this my lesson flyer here, and I'm, even though it's my own work, right? I'm like, who, uh, you know? So here, everybody see Reno. Um, so I'm making this right, and I'm working on this. And then I'm over here on my template. So Canva is completely free. It's super easy. And I typed into over here vision boards, right? And this is where this all came up to a thing. So let's see. I'm gonna go home. I should not. Oh, where did it go? All your designs. So there's so and I got my uploads. So what I've done is take this picture. I don't know if you guys can see my picture. Is it big enough? Mm-hmm. Oh, just a second. Yeah, let me see if I go, just go away. Make this bigger. So I've taken this one, and if I was more, I took, so I found this picture online, right? And I should take the other pictures, right? But this one, to me, makes has more feeling to it because there's the crowd involved, right? That's just me. And I label them. And I, if I was better I would take this out right but it's the view from inside the box right so the idea is, the reason I chose this template oh go away go back now I made it oh okay so the reason I chose this template is to me it's linear you can start over here in the upper left hand corner and go across because in my mind it's everything's linear but it's I know in reality it's not but in my my mind works that way. <laughs> so, like, I would put this picture over here in the bottom right-hand corner, right? Um, and I labeled it. And then the other piece of it, too, is that down here in the underneath, you can write things about the picture, right? Um, and that way you put a, and then you have to take the picture and envision and feel into it and have an emotional, emotional connection. But, you have to feel like it's there, not just it's something you write down, which is where I think the power of pictures, even though I'm more of a doer and a shaker, I think the power of pictures is that much more powerful. 
I think you can do it in any way you want, but that's that's what I did. So I like here, like if you haven't ever been to a jackpot before, or you could put in this top left hand corner that you know lots of the people I, that I'm working with, you know, they just would like to ride their horse after a calf, right? So a picture of their horse and a calf in this upper left hand corner is where they want to start, you know, and put the pieces in there. I'll, uh, yes, text me your email and I will. My, my piece here of vision boarding. Does that make sense? I'm going to stop screen sharing and go back to the other. Okay. So. So anyway, that is my piece on um, vision boarding and why it's so important. And do you have to use that program? No. Can you just take pictures with your phone or find pictures on Google and crop them and label them that way and save a series of pictures? The issue I have and the physical therapist in me says that they have to be tangible, that that I need to take once I finish that vision board and print it out, and it has to be tangible in places. Yes, I make it digitally, but I need to have it out there. And I think even in that respect, writing it underneath those pieces um, underneath of it are that much more important. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? Karen? So, what questions do you guys have? Hi, sorry, I think I was on mute. Oh, that's okay, yeah. I think everybody starts out on mute. Well, and I joined late. Whoops. Oh, that's okay. I was making a gingerbread house. Oh, awesome, how fun. It's ugly, don't worry. It's awful. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Have you done a vision board before, or how, how have you written your goals down before? Yeah, so... During Rodeo Queen stuff, those coaches had us do vision boards. And then um, one of the trainers I had, we sat down every year in January and wrote down, we, we all had our notebooks and we wrote down what we wanted to accomplish that year uh -huh. um, and kind of set dates with, you know, this, this event is in June. We want to be ready for that. Um, and we kind of did like almost goal mapping because we mapped out our whole year of where we were going to go. Um, mm -hmm. And that was how we set up where we saw ourselves going. And then I usually added quotes and pictures and kept it on the back of my bedroom door that I would see every night. Um, so yeah, I've done those. I haven't done one yet for 2020, but I'm working on it. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I think that's a good point too. in the fact that, um, you did it linear through the year and my assumption is is then you were able to work backwards and reverse engineer what you needed to do every day based or what you needed to do this week or that week to be able to be ready for x y or z yeah and then you were able to look back because you know august or september would come and we'd been out on the road and so then i'd be able to look back and see all the things that i really had done and had accomplished on those days where it's kind of tough because you're feeling like you're in a rut that's a good point to say what how far you have come mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um who else i don't see any other names let's see danny have you done a vision board before Oh, there you are. Try now. No. That works? Yes. Uh, it's not working. You're welcome to share in the chat too. 
Leslie, have you done a vision board or how have you used this? Hi. Hi. I'm driving, so bear with me. I'm, I'm driving in kind of a bad spot. Screw because there's. I'm gonna, so anyway, um, but yeah, I I did one this year and I had some goals to meet. And every time I do a vision board, I meet those goals every time. It's pretty amazing. I, I love stuff. that. Yes. So. Um, I'm kind of in a bad spot, so. Oh, that's okay. And I put I put my vision board. I take a picture of it and make it my um oh, what do you call it? Um, my screensaver on my phone. That's a great idea. I tried to do that the other day, but I wouldn't show the whole thing. It would only show the middle of it. So I have to figure out my iPhone technical difficulties. So. Does Leslie do it visual or um, digitally? Because I like in the field of education, there's a lot of times we do visual boards, like goals for the day, right? So mm -hmm. we walk in, we have an agenda, we have goals for the day. And a lot of times we add pictures to those steps that they have because that helps the visual learners. And then I can say what those steps are auditorily so that we have our auditory learners. And then we have moments where we can get up and move around and then our kinesthetic learners get to get involved in that as well. So there's the, so different types of vision boards, whether you're doing it digitally or you can actually, I know you guys said magazine, but you could even draw. I mean, certain little types of pictures. They don't necessarily have to be outstanding artistic type pictures, but just something that represents what it is that you're going to do. No, that's a really good point. Just to, cause I, I think that probably is the most powerful way to do it, to draw it and then to write it by hand. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, pictures. Yeah, pictures and words kind of intermixing together to kind of make up like your goal or your sentence, um, if that makes any sense. For sure, right? Because we got the kinesthetic, and the we research just shows that the fact that if you write it by hand, it goes to a different part of our brain than it does if we type it, and it's not as powerful. Mm -hmm. And we're, I think we're creating it more in the universe per se. I'm sure that there's a more Western way to say it, but if we're writing it, it's more, more powerful. And then to speak it, to speak yeah. it out loud, don't you think? Yep. Yep. But it was one of the things too, especially, you know, way back in the day when I was playing ball, that was one of the big things that my dad was big on is that we always had goals set and that. You know, I didn't necessarily verbally verbalize them to, you know, accordingly to coach, but not to anyone other than my coach and, and my dad, because that was that was kind of my inner circle at that moment. But um, same thing. So whatever, whatever it is you're aspiring to do, that's and it needs to be whether you're doing it for your roping or whether you're doing it for, uh, you know, life, mm -hmm. honestly how did you phrase that? How was that statement phrased? Which statement? Like, is it I want to, I am? Uh, a little bit of everything. And, and the, the word believe comes in there a lot, right? <clears throat> for, for me, because you, you know, you have to believe that it's going to happen and that mm -hmm. you're going to do it. I am, I will. I, I, like, I like the statements I am, but sometimes they don't feel quite, like I, quite right yet. So I, I'll use the statements, or I, I'm willing to allow if I'm working mm -hmm. on something that's harder, like not necessarily roping wise, but more personal or emotional or mental, like I'm willing to allow myself x y or z i feel i gives that one i probably won't write it that way but i will say it that way giving myself some grace 
Right. Because you're your own worst critic. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, I mean uh, in, in general, we are our own worst critics. I wasn't necessarily speaking to you. No, you know, that's just, that's, but that's we just are, how it we is. We are our own worst critics by far. For sure. <laughs> Um, so yeah. here's a question. Okay. I'm going <laughs> to bring in, bring in a little, not, well, not negative, trying to outwork the negative. Right. So what happens when you, your I wills or your I am going to's or any of those, what happens when that doesn't happen for you? We come back, reassess, readjust, figure oh. out why and carry on. Um, I guess just, just keeping things realistic, right? Um, usually, usually there, you know, it's a couple things. What did, you, what did you really, what did you accomplish? And then did you really not accomplish that? Or did you just not run out of time? You know, okay. like, you know, like a football game, right? And I'm a, you know, diehard Seahawks fan and we, we do, you know, Pete Carroll, you don't, you don't win the game in the first quarter. You don't win the game in the second quarter. You don't win it in the third quarter. You win it in the fourth quarter. And then if we lose ever, it's just that we ran out of time. Right. Um, okay. That, you know, you just, did you run out of time? And um, that's that piece of it is how I frame it for myself. What in other that? words, and, and so in other words, I, what I get out of it is it's not focusing on the end goal per se completely. Right. It's just focusing on the process because if you focus on the result, you're never going to get there. You Correct. focus on the process, you are. Correct. So readjusting just might mean that you have to take a different path to get to your end goal. And we, and of course, I, I'm not, I mean, I readjust whether it be you know what i'm doing with my life or what i'm doing with my horses or what i'm doing you know how you mm -hmm. interact with people but those all have to be you have to just really focus on the process and what process works for you may not work for me may not work for jennifer may not work for you know the next person down the road but that's the process yeah so sometimes i think we lose vision of the process because we really want that end goal well, and I think we forget to be flexible, that it's okay to do something differently than the other person mm -hmm. or than we've done before because we're afraid to be flexible. Mm -hmm. Or be different. Or be different. Yeah. Not follow the norm. We have to be our own individuals. That's the hardest. <laughs> Not the hardest, but that is hard. It's true. Yeah, because what works for one isn't necessarily going to work for the other. For sure. And I think the other piece to the puzzle too is it comes down to how bad, how bad are we willing to work for it? Yes. Because there's a lot, of, I mean, you know, we can only say so much, but actions speak louder than words. So not only do you have to, I mean, you have to make sure that you are exploring all the other paths out there that are going to help lead you to that end result and not shut any of the doors, All right? Right, and be open to, for me, how that looks or manifests it is, is I'm, I'm here, but then I have to, and so I've done a better job in the last two years of being open to just these nigging little like this or that and being willing to ask questions about it and say yes or no, that, you know, I might have only, always said no to X, Y, or Z, but now I'm saying, oh, I do need to work on X, Y, or Z. Mm -hmm. um, but that's uh, not work on, but look at, reevaluate. And be open to. Yes. Open to trying. Mm -hmm. How, does that sound better, and Sarah? Oh, yeah, no, it's really good. I just thought I, I can't be the only one wondering okay what happens when mm -hmm. you know so it's it's good to i guess i want to learn how to problem solve maybe beforehand type of thing i don't know whether that's a good or bad um 
but yeah, no, that whole focusing on the process is, is huge, right? And it's just good to hear, hear it again. And I think the fact that, okay, so we're going to set our, our goals or our vision or however it may be for 2020, and then you have to reverse engineer, you know, what do I need to do, you know, what I'm doing now or what I did for Vegas, well, okay, in theory, should have started in June if my horse would have had four legs, right? Um, but that was just a curveball. We had to keep adjusting, 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 right? Um, and I don't know how far out you guys take that, right? But like, I'm looking a year out, two years out, five years out, not five, probably about, you know, I do it in three months segments, right? And then take it back, you know, where I want to be in three months, six months, and then reverse engineer what do I need to do today and how that looks in my planner. And these can I can I add something to that? Oh yeah, go for it. Um I just I just took a sports counseling um a course with a sports counselor because I kind of got messed up in my head with my barrel horses. And um anyway, I was taught she told me to make a goal like a long-term goal so i made my goal that i want to make circuit finals in october of 2021 i wasn't even going to push for this year because it's you know for 20 because it's a mess so um she she told me to work backwards and um figure out where you want to be every quarter so break your years down into a three month um uh, quarters and where you have to be but start backwards and and then plot it out and it really helped me with my training program with um, this horse I have right now mm -hmm. for sure oh I think that that's a great I think is that the technical term reverse engineering yeah that's I couldn't that. remember it, but yeah I think that's what the what it's called right I think you have to keep working it backwards until you know and basically plan it so in backwards until you have every hour of every day planned right exactly because unless you're willing to do the work 24 hours a day seven days a week there is somebody that's willing to do the work 24 hours seven days a week unless you're not willing to do that you're not going to be as far as long as that So, Jennifer, this is Patty. I'd just like to say that I guess through some education classes, there have been stuff, things like this. Just, I don't guess I called it a vision board, but like writing down the goals and saying, I will rope the dummy every day, and things like that. Um, as far as what Sarah was saying about what happens when it doesn't happen, I mean, like the year we won the world, okay, Kim Williamson, I roped with her, but she had this day planner. And she's just like, okay, I want you to rope with me. I've written down we're going to win the world in my day planner, you know, and I'm like, oh, okay, it's that simple. But, <laughs> you know, but it worked. I thought, oh, so then we're there and she buys this horse and she's like, well, I'm going to win the um, Grand Canyon thing on him first and then I'm going to go ahead and take him to WPRA things, you know, and I'm just like, oh my goodness. And sure enough, a girl was leading it and she missed and she won it. And I'm like, I've got to get one of these day planners. <laughs> but on the other part of that, like what Sarah was talking about, like one time I was roping with a gal, it was this rodeo cybernetics tapes that we listened to and all this stuff. And I mean, I was so wound up and so ready and it didn't happen. And I will never forget the ride home from that year at the finals. I mean, I was just like, it was, it was so hard. So, I mean, it's like Sarah's saying, you kind of have to have a, a rewind or a rebound recovery on what you do. And I mean, I guess there you might just say, well, I sure as heck didn't like that feeling. So I, now I'm going to work harder to get where I want to be because that was no fun, <laughs> you know? So, but I, I don't know. And is there anything like on these vision boards? Like, do you, and I mean, I haven't been in y'all's group to listen to what you've been saying before, but do you have like, I guess, numerical goals, like I'll have a 90% catch rate or, or is there anything like that that you work into those? 
So the vision board is more just a visual representation of your goals and it's more kind of out, not out, but they're, they're things that like the NFR, right? It is not, I mean, it wasn't tangible 10 years ago. It's just this, it's out there, right? But then from there, they're not my only goals, right? I go back and I guess I don't do those type of goals. Um, but I know then you can work back and write your other goals. They're just uh, like the, the picture representation of your long term, and then you can work back and write more quarterly goals or X, Y, or Z is how I would do it. Other people's thoughts? I guess you can just make a, you can make a vision board be whatever the heck you want it to be. It is your vision board. Exactly. You know, it, it can be your daily goals. It can be a weekly goal. It can be anything you want. Correct. And so, you know, if, if changing the glory, your... the glory of it is don't have just one. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying we can have options. Stace. By God. Yeah. Finding time to even think about what your goal is. That's, <laughs> that's been my trouble digging out from stacks to even be able to get back to roping and even being able to practice and do all these things. So. Right. But that, that's the first step. Right. Well, and I feel like, isn't that, you know, just that whole goal thing, you know, your daily, you know, if you commit five minutes to something that you love, that's five more minutes than, you know, you did the day before. Right. It doesn't have to be huge. It can just be baby steps as well. Mm -hmm. I will, while you guys talk, let me share. I share here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this and find what I want to find. My Google Drive here. So this is, so I think, because there's a two piece, right? Uh, go away. I have, so I have my practice journal, right? Or not journal, but my, how I write my practices and then my drive. And I, can you guys see my thing? I have a weekly review. So this isn't where I, this isn't my feedback to myself of your performance for the week, right? So this is the flip side of it. I have my performance, um, nutrition, sleep, self, all these things. My, and I think this is part of what Stacy's talking about, your wins for the week, because it's more about the process than the end goal. You know, and you have to come back to every win for every piece of it. And then what you learned, and then my action plans, and my, thing, my, my, my one thing for the next week. So that's how I do stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Stop sharing. That's really cool. Where do you get that from? created it I share it with my you created staff. it yeah and then I have I use a push journal and these are things and so like and uh, somebody else I work with hers starts at four in the morning and goes to ten at night and that's not me um, but like I have a thing and it has a schedule I don't know if you guys can see this um, but for every day so like it has a push goal, which is this, their concept, my three things I'm going to do, my tasks, but then I have a schedule for my, you know, hourly schedule and then daily. I for your whole day. Yes. For my full day. Right. So this is work, work included, work included because it, I can't, so I've, I've tried separating both, but it doesn't work. Right. Mm -hmm. So everything goes on to here. And then on the other page is a, food log, which I don't use anymore um, because of the intermittent fasting and stuff. Water, water's not an issue for me. Fitness, which I write down if I walk or what I do. Weight, sleep, and then they, they this gal also sells a 313 method. So she has this little thing, which I don't use this a lot, but I do track my sleep and I track my weight. That's just for me. So. Um, so that's where I come up with the daily stuff, I guess. I'm not sure what I, where I was going with that. 
So I have that, the weekly review, and then I have my practice thing. So, um, so for every practice, and I probably don't fill it out as much as I have people I work with fill it out, but this is what we're gonna work on. Same thing, right? Same concepts. Mm -hmm. So, um, back to my practice journal. I'm not sure what the big, no, 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 oops, sorry guys. Um, so my practice plan, right? My practice plan, what I'm gonna work on, equipment changes, so green, obviously Seahawks colors, and um, <laughs> I drink all of Pete Carroll's juice. Like I drink the Pete Carroll juice. <laughs> like, um, and then, so I, plan my practice and then I rate my practice, right? Um, so that's, that's what like, I think the, like, that's the in like, those are the individual steps to the daily, to the vision board. I don't know. That's, I think people have, you have to come up with that. Anyway. So. <laughs> What other questions do you guys have? What kind of went longer than, which is awesome. Well, I don't know if this pertains to this and maybe this is something you've touched on before, but this is just me. Like when I'm working on something, I mean like, like I have to tell Glenn, don't tell me anything before I wrote, because if he does, I can't get it out of my brain and I go down through there thinking about it and I swing in slow motion because I'm thinking, you know, and so anyway, just going from the thinking part to the doing part, that's hard for me. So, so. what works best, better, what works better for you then if you're working on something new? Working on something new? So if you're working on something like you said that, it doesn't work if he tells you that. So what does how what works best for you then? <laughs> uh, it's almost like when I'm not even thinking about it. It's I know that's terrible, but I mean I have to do something to get it something started right, and then go from there. But mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe that's the focus through the practice or whatever. I'm not very coachable. He tells me. <laughs> <laughs> but you have but i think that goes back to kind of what stacy was saying or aaron whoever it it we each have to know what works best for us right right um, yeah that, so that, the question that. is do you go into a practice with a plan of, for yourself and then and then once you, I mean, obviously we have all have a focus and we have a practice when I do, I have a focus on whether I'm going to work on something I, for myself or my horse, but then I execute that and then come back and reevaluate and it may be reevaluate and make adjustments in between runs or it may, may, you know, I'm going to run these, this many calves and then I'm going to come back and reevaluate. Right. Okay. So usually what happens with me is I'll be trying something, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll start out just roping the dummy and let's say chasing the buggy healing. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm an outsider y'all, but anyway, you know, just chasing and doing something and I'll, and I'll say, okay, I'm going to work on some new concept, you know, and then if it doesn't work, I get all frustrated and then just try to go back to letting it happen. I mean, it's, it's just almost like the thinking throws it all all apart. I mean, it's kind of like playing the piano. I could never read music. I couldn't read the music fast enough to play the song. I, I guess I I guess I'm a slow reader or a slow thinker, and so it slows everything down. I don't know. I'm an unusual character. <laughs> but you have to allow yourself the grace to when you're trying something new for it to not go right. Right. And sometimes it's just become muscle memory. Right. Right. So I just think you have a process that you try it and you put it into muscle memory and then you let your muscles work through it versus your brain 
because uh, you know for any of us if we have if we thought about step x y and z at the speed we're going it's not gonna on uh, you know live cat it might work on the sled but it, we can't do it fast enough on live cattle right so, so. yep what else guys this has been fun this is this is awesome especially since you, I didn't cook very much. you should do this at least once a week right <laughs> i think it's a great thing i agree <laughs> you might have to put purchase zoom they gave me a little thing they uh, pop up and said we love you we're le letting you extend your time tonight <laughs> perfect right i'm not sure how that i had i had purchased it this summer but um i had stopped having a subscription to it so so yeah cool so i challenge you guys to you know put put something out there put something in writing put something in the universe for what you want in 2020 and i think it's i think that has to be more than just about your roping if that makes sense but is there anything else besides roping <laughs> you're showing your age <laughs> <laughs> For, the, for those of us that are employed, employed, yes, Sarah, there is. Uh, don't worry, I'm looking for a job. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of job? Mm, Non-pharmacy related. No, Sarah, did you see that little trailer at the South Point? You could get you a little one-horse trailer and put your little pharmacy in there and go around to the rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> And sell, sell natural herbs. There you but go. Patty, I, I don't think those are my clientele that I would like to have. <laughs> oh. Some people down the road that their hemp went too high. So th that could be, you know, more what you, you might be selling out of your trailer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> their percentages went above whatever. Right. Yeah. So cool. Awesome. It's kind of like but just like jennifer's um practice plan thing and the deal that she talked about there's so many different aspects to the roping piece right break it all down into small small pieces and do it that way whether it be your horsemanship you know your rope your your physical um physical exercise whatever it is right your mental game Break all of those pieces down and put them into, and have goals for you know, or a vision board of some kind or a goal for each one, you know, each aspect of it. Right. I think that's a good way to put it because I think that's why, when people come to me and say I just want to catch or I want to be able to catch three out of four times or I had this great practice I caught ten I'm like well I don't care that doesn't do you any good you know and I think that's why right <laughs> yeah uh, because it's more important that okay you know the x y or z is in place than you caught whatever in practice um except for my people that are just starting i mean you know but but then even though like I, you know i have quite a few people that had never swung a rope before that i'm working with right and even when they do catch you know and it's so so exciting when they catch right but then you take it immediately back and say, well, you know, you caught because your horse crossed over, you put your left hand down, you rode your horse into the snow, you break it back down, right, to even to those spots. So I got to let my dog out. will be working here in a minute as you can hear but so anyway awesome thank you guys and if you guys want to do it again next week let me know or probably the week after we always can hop on thank you jenna okay Appreciate it. bye thanks jennifer